Welcome back to Black Movie Recaps. Today I'm going to show you a biography action crime film that was released in 2006 titled, Blood Diamond. This is a spoiler content. Watch out and take care. Set during the Sierra Leone Civil War in 1999, the troubled nation is ravaged by major political unrest. The film begins with Solomon Vandy waking up his son Dia to get ready to do to school. Solomon is a fisherman in a town called Mend, and married with three children. On their way home after picking Dia from school, the Revolutionary United Front RUF, rebels invade the small Sierra Leonean village. Solomon hides Dia and runs for the rest of his family. Solomon is captured whilst the rest of his family flees. The rebels terrorize and amputate the locals to prevent them from voting. The strong villagers are enslaved to harvest diamonds in the fields. The rough rebels use the diamonds to fund their war effort, often trading them directly for arms. In South African, a delegation is discussing how to prohibit the direct or indirect import of all rough diamonds from conflict zones, in order to stop funding warlords. Present are South African Diamond Company executives Mr. Van de Kopp and Mr. Simmons. Separated from his family, Solomon is enslaved to work in the diamond fields under the command of the ruthless Captain Poison. Captain Poison tells them the rough is fighting for the people, to prevent the government and their white masters from stealing their diamond. Danny Archer, an Anglo ex-mercenary from Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, arrives at an rough camp with his pilot Nabil. He is an arms dealer and a diamond smuggler. He is taken to one rough commander where he receives his payment for delivering weapons to the rebels. He is imprisoned after being caught smuggling the diamonds into neighboring Liberia, and the diamonds are confiscated. He had been transporting the diamonds to a South African mercenary named Colonel Kotsia, who is in turn employed by Van de Kopp and his deputy Simmons. Kotsia is Archer's former commander in 32 Battalion, the most decorated unit of the South African border war, made up of Angolan and Rhodesian soldiers, and white South African officers. While working in the rough diamond fields as a forced laborer, Solomon finds a large diamond of rare pink coloring. He hides it, and asks for permission to ease himself. Moments before government troops launch an attack, Captain Poison sees Solomon hiding the diamond. Solomon quickly hides it in a hole, and both he and Captain Poison are taken to prison in Freetown, the capital of Sierra Leone. They are imprisoned in the same prison where Archer is held. While in prison, he overhears Captain Poison ranting to Solomon about the discovery of the largest pink diamond he discovered. Archer is desperate for a way to repay Colonel Kotsia for the diamonds taken from him when he was arrested and thrown in jail, and devises a plan to hunt down the pink diamond. Archer is bailed out by Nabil, who shown him a news article of Van de Kopp and Simmons denying their relationship with him. He tells Nabil to arrange for Solomon's release from prison. He removes a diamond he was hiding in his teeth, and trades it on the market for some cash. Kotsia sends one of his mercenaries to remind Archer of his diamonds. Archer visits a local bar, where he gives the bartender money in an attempt to purchase a gun, which will be delivered later. Archer meets an American journalist named Maddie Bowen. Maddie is investigating Van de Kopp and is linked to the funding rebels through diamond purchase. After learning Archer is his smuggler, she hopes to get Archer's help, off the record in exposing Van de Kapp, but Archer denies her request. We find out Dia is later captured and conscripted as child soldier into the rebel force. He is trained by the rebels, made to do drugs, brainwashed by the released Captain Poison, eventually turning him into a hardened killer. Solomon is later released from prison and given money by Nabil. He visits a refugee camp to try and locate his family, but the officers in charge claim they do not have any information on them. Archer travels to Cape Town, South Africa to meet Colonel Kotsia. Kotsia tells him the government of Sierra Leone has contacted them to come in and take down the rebels. Archer gets the weapons he sells the rebels from Kotsia. Kotsia sells weapons to rebels, they use it, and the government hires him to take down the rebels, in exchange for mining concessions. He made Archer aware of his knowledge of the pink diamond, and would be expecting it as payment for his confiscated diamonds. Archer returns Sierra Leone and tracks down Solomon. He asks him about the diamond, but Solomon denies any knowledge of it. Archer goes to the bar to claim the weapon he purchased earlier from the bartender. He sees Mandy again and requests for a dance with her. They danced for a while, then Mandy again asked for information on Van de Kopp, Archer turned her down again and leaves. Rough insurgents escalate hostilities, Freetown falls to their advance. Archer finds Solomon, and offers to help him find his family in exchange for the diamond. He agrees and suddenly, the rebels open fire on the people of Freetown. They murder both military men and civilians altogether. Archer and Solomon manage to find a place where they hide until midnight. 
As the rebels get distracted with the celebration, they make their escape. They get to a bridge which is guarded by rough soldiers. Archer pretends to be Solomon's hostage, giving him the advantage to attack and murder the rebels first. Archer and Solomon join a group of civilians to travel to Lungi, which is under government's control and free of rough rebels. Archer approaches an investigator and tells him to find Maddie and inform her about his location. Maddie arrives later and Archer introduces her to Solomon. Archer tells Maddie there's a company called Tiara Diamonds, that gets the diamonds he smuggles into Liberia. Van de Kopp has no visible ties to Tiara, but through a series of cross-holdings and offshore bank accounts, he actually owns it. He agrees to help Maddie prove it, only if Maddie agrees to use her access to the UN databases to locate Solomon's family. Maddie tracks down Solomon's family to a refugee camp in Guinea. The camp is the second largest refugee camp in Africa, and hosts over a million people. Maddie takes pictures of the refugees for one of her reports as they wait for Solomon's family. Solomon is finally reunited with his family, but soon realizes Dia's absence. The wife tells him he was taken by the rebels. Angry Solomon asks for the release of his family, but his request is met with hostility and denied. They're concerned that some of the refugees might be rebels, and can only be released after there's a ceasefire. Bowen soon learns that Archer is using Solomon to find his diamond and will eventually steal it for himself, to leave Africa forever. Archer asks Maddie if he can pose as a journalist, and Solomon his cameraman, in order to get access to use the press convoy to travel to Kono to find the diamond. Maddie refuses to help Archer, unless he can tell her about the diamond market to stop the flow of blood diamonds out of Africa, cutting off funding for civil war, and ending a mass revolution. Archer finally gives Maddie the information that she wants. After he smuggles the diamond across the border, local buyers get them to a middleman man in Monrovia. He pays off customs, and then certifies that the diamonds were mined in Liberia. That way, they can be legally exported. Once the diamonds reach the buyers in Antwerp, they are brought to the sorting tables, with no more questions asked. By the time they get to India, two dirty stones are mixed with the clean stones from all over the world, becoming like any other diamonds. When Archer gets to London, he meets with Simmons. Van de Kopp's company buys these stones, and keeps them in an underground vault, to keep them off the market. They control the supply and demand, maintaining the high prices of diamonds. The company's main marketing is based on how rare the stones are, and cannot allow the rebels to flood the market with billion dollars worth of diamonds. So technically, they're not financing war, but creating a situation where they pay rebels to keep it going. He shows Maddie his proof with documented names, dates, and numbered accounts. He tells Maddie to only publish it after he gives them the diamond, or his death. Archer and Solomon join the convoy to Kono, posing as journalist and cameraman respectively. On their way, they stop to cover a report. The convoy is attacked immediately by the rough rebels. Solomon, Maddie and Archer join a different truck and they make their escape. They are later attacked again by the rebels, to which only Archer, Solomon and Maddie narrowly escape by driving into the bush. The truck is crashed, and they continue their journey on foot. They come across a group of local militia, protecting their homes. They take them to their camp where they're received by the leader, Benjamin Margai. He oversees a group of former child soldiers that were taken by the rough, giving them education, and bringing them back to life with a new purpose. That night, Archer tells Maddie Benjamin has offered to drive them to Kono. Benjamin has known most of the rebels since their childhood. The commander is afraid he can take over from him, hence they do not attack his camp. On their way the next morning, they come across child soldiers guarding a bridge. Archer tells Benjamin to drive right at them, but Benjamin thinks he can talk his way through, landing him a bullet. Archer quickly drives away. They drive to the South African Mercenary Force airstrip in Kono under Colonel Kotsia. Benjamin is taken on a stretcher for medical treatment. There, they learn of the attack force preparing to retake Sierra Leone. Archer gives Maddie the book, and tells her to distract one of the officers, as he steals food and weapons from the storeroom. They say their goodbyes, and Maddie hands out her contact to Aker, saying she'd be expecting his call. The two men leave the camp on foot while Maddie boards a plane carrying foreigners out of the conflict zone. At night, they see approaching rough truck and runs for cover. Thinking he's seen Dia amongst the child soldiers, he calls out his name. The rebels chase them into the bush, and they hide under palm leaves. The next morning, Archer warns Solomon, never to put his life at risk like that again. The men arrive at a small village, where they learn it's inhabited by child soldiers. Solomon tries to walk straight into their camp to look for Dia, but Archer stops him. Solomon tells him he's going regardless, but Archer manages to convince him to scout at night. 
They search for a while, but there's no sign of Dia's presence and leave. Solomon tells Archer he believes peace will finally come, and his son will grow up to become a doctor. After an arduous overnight trek, the men reach the mining camp in a river valley, still under rough control, where Solomon discovered and buried the large diamond. Archer calls Colonel Kotsia to give him the coordinates to send in an airstrike. At night, Solomon infiltrates the camp to get Dia out of there before the strike. Here, Solomon is painfully reunited with Dia, who refuses to acknowledge him, because he has been brainwashed by the rebels. The next morning, Solomon is also reunited with Captain Poison, who orders him to find the diamond, but the South African mercenary force, also after the diamond, dispatches the rough rebels in a massive airstrike, which kills many of the rough rebels and some of the miners. Amidst the koas, Solomon suffers from temporary insanity and kills Poison with a shovel. Archer grabs Dia and hides him. After the strike, Colonel Kotsia tells Archer to force Solomon to retrieve the stone. Archer secretly tells Solomon the Colonel is going to kill them both after he has the diamond. However, he pulls a stunt where he uses Dia to force Solomon to take them to the location. Solomon digs the wrong hole and claims the stone might be gone. Holding Dia at gunpoint, Solomon pretends to remember to spot, only to get close to Kotsia and attack him. In a desperate battle, Archer kills Kotsia and the other two soldiers. As Archer overturns a body to take equipment he realizes he has been shot, but keeps this to himself. Solomon digs the right hole to retrieve the diamond. At this point, Dia holds Archer and Solomon at gunpoint with a pistol, but Solomon manages to convince him to side with them. They run away from the soldiers who continue to chase them. Having arranged in advance for a plane to pick him up, he radios Nabil. Slowly and painfully the group makes its way from the valley towards an airstrip atop a nearby ridge. Archer collapses, unable to climb, and Solomon carries him a little while, before Archer has him put him down. He tells Solomon to take Dia home, knowing that he is dying, and gives them the diamond. Archer holds off the soldiers chasing them while Solomon and Dia flee. He then makes a final phone call to Maddie, asking her to help Solomon as a last favor, before looking out over the beautiful landscape of Africa once more, and dying peacefully. Maddie brings Solomon into London and arranges a meeting between him and Simmons. Simmons offers Solomon two million pounds in exchange for the diamond. Solomon however, tells him he'll only agree to sell to him for the money, in addition to reuniting with his family. Maddie is secretly photographing the meeting. Making the exchange as Solomon's wife and children deplane from a Learjet at a London airport. Maddie, who secretly photographs the deal, later publishes a magazine piece exposing the trade in conflict or blood diamonds, exposing Van de Kopp's criminal actions. The film ends with Solomon smiling at the photograph Maddie took of Archer earlier, now published in her magazine along with a complete story of their journey, before addressing a conference on blood diamonds in Kimberley, South Africa, describing his experiences. This refers to an actual meeting that took place in Kimberley in 2000 and led to the Kimberley Process Certification Scheme, which seeks to certify the origin of diamonds in order to curb the trade in conflict diamonds. As many as 40 countries signed this agreement to handle the sale of illegal diamonds. However, it is up to the buyer to buy diamonds that are completely free from conflict. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.